Hello and welcome to another flying video with Flight Level 180. Today we are doing another difficult, interesting approach, another one in my series, and we're doing it in the Beechcraft Bonanza. We're flying into Castlegar, which is in British Columbia in Canada. Uh, this airport is considered to be one of the most difficult in the world, uh, and you're going to see why very, very shortly. It's dangerous, it's difficult, it's really quite a challenge, and we're going to fly two separate approaches here. Now one thing that leaps out here as we look out the cockpit, uh, you know, we've got mountains on all sides, uh, we've got a extremely foggy weather in places, uh, it's raining at the airport, uh, it's really not a, it's really not a party when you're landing at this airport, and uh, we're gonna, which is what makes it fun. Now we're doing this in X-Plane 11, uh, the legal warning, anybody who's doing this, considering this for real world flying, uh, shouldn't be even considering it. This is, uh, this is for simulators only. If you want to use any of the concepts here, uh, discuss it with your CFI. Don't listen to me. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and start looking at the approach charts. And these charts are, these are uh, old charts. Do not use them for real world navigation. Uh, you can obtain these on the web. I recommend you go download these if you want to try what we're doing. Uh, so what we're doing is we're up to the north here and we're going to do an NDB, the NDBC approach first. And so we're north of the airport and we are on a approximately 179 degree course heading directly for the uh, for this NDB, the Castlegar NDB, which is the one at 12.2 DME. Uh, we're going to go to that DME, we're going to go to that NDB, then we're going to fly to the second DME, which is brilliant, which is 4.5 DME, and then we're going to descend into a circling minimum for the field and circle to land if we can actually acquire the field. Now, one thing I want you to note here is the elevation of the airport in the upper right is 1624, while the circling minimum is 5380. So you have 3,700 feet or so, 3,650, somewhere in there, of distance between the two elevations. Uh, so this is not your typical L LPV or RNAV approach where you're down 200 feet or 500 feet. We are going to be significantly above the airport. And to get down, you actually have to have visual, uh, a visual of the field and be able to circle down and land. So, and I've chopped off the bottom here, but there's no LPV minimums. There's nothing like that. The only minimum you get is that circling minimum. So, uh, if you note here, there is a DME that we're going to be using. You don't actually have to use this. Uh, in theory, you could go without, without the DME and just use the NDBs as a basis for knowing where you are. But, but we're going to use it just because it makes things a little bit easier. Um, and then... After we do this approach, we're going to go mist, and we're probably going to have to go mist because there's a lot of weather over the airport. Then we're going to try the RNAV approach and see if we can actually get the airplane down. Uh, should be interesting, should be challenging, and we'll, uh, I think you'll find this interesting. So let's go ahead and jump over to a better view. So I'm going to move this over to the side. You can see there, you know, underneath circling minimums, there's no, uh, there's no minimum underneath that for... Uh, uh, for LPV, so or for anything else, that's that's all you get. So let's go ahead and pop this up and turn off this message. And so I put CG in here, just so we can. Uh, so we need to be at CG. We need to be at 8,000. If you look at the chart, and that's in the bottom in the vertical profile section. And so let's go ahead and set that up. We could do this in our heads, but we're going to be lazy and use the GPS to do that. So at CG, we need to be at 8,000 and our profile is going to be 500 feet per minute so we'll start when we're about when our required vertical rate is about 450 okay so let's just keep an eye on that now to get down there we're going to set our and typically i do this hand flying uh but i find that this one is so challenging that uh, uh i have a real hard time speaking and speaking and uh, and flying at the same time when I'm doing this approach so or we're just going to do it the lazy way using the autopilot and you know when you do it yourself and you're comfortable with it use the uh, use your hand flying skills so we're going to be at 8,000 at uh, at CG is our goal 
and then we're going to be flying at a 179 course and we're actually doing very nicely we're pointing the MDB nicely at the we're right on the right course right on 179 uh, so that's good we might have to adjust that a little bit later our gears up our flaps are up our cow flaps are closed we have our uh, we probably should turn on our pitot heat and our prop de ice as we go into these clouds and probably not a bad idea to just turn on our landing lights now just because we don't want to be overloaded when the time comes. Uh, looks like there's maybe slightly more fuel in the right hand tank so let's point it over there and looking good. So 332, 333 feet. So let's go ahead and look at the charts while we have a little bit of time here. So here's the NDB chart. You can see it is 5380 is the circling minimum and when we pull up the RNAV chart you can see the minimum goes down almost by about almost 900 feet so you get a massive advantage in flying the RNAV and if you look at the two you notice the NDB flies right over this hill it's a straight in approach with three DMEs right with three NDBs right in a line there's actually another one down here while if you look at the RNAV that takes advantage of the fact that it can get you slightly off to the side and get you bypass this hill which is very hill very high right in your way so it, it's able to get you down to a 4500 minimum and those extra almost a thousand feet should really come in handy now let's see what else we have here if you notice here on the left side it says no circling to the east of the airport these are really steep cliffs if we need to do our when we go into our pattern we're going to do a right pattern to actually stay away from those mountains now on the flip side you notice the the mist let's jump back to the other one the mist is going to be a straight up to climb straight out 179 degrees it's to 7,000 feet and then after that we're going to make a climbing left turn once we're clear of the train to 9,000 back to the cg ndb so back to the castle bar ndb so as you can see here we are very very quickly approaching our Approaching the time when we're going to want to start our descent. So let's go ahead and get our charts up and be ready to go. So here's the NDB chart so you can follow along with what we're doing. Uh, and I think we're ready to go ahead and start our descent. So let's do this. And next thing I'm going to do, you can notice where our true is about a little over 140 knots. I'm going to bring my power down to, and the last thing you want to be doing is slamming into these mountains at extremely high speed when you don't have to. So I'm going to bring the the map down to about 17 inches and we're gonna leave the prop RPM where it is and we're gonna slow things down now once we get to the NDBs uh, we're not an airliner we don't have to do this three degree gradual approach uh, and you can see like just just peeking out the window here you know we're coming into some pretty heavy terrain there's heavy fog in the valleys I did the real world weather and explain I've been flying this approach for the last couple days. It is whew, a difficult, difficult approach uh, when there's weather like this. And you can see why this, this airport gets such a difficult, uh, such a tough reputation. Now, once we get back to what I was saying, once we get back down to these, uh, these NDBs, I'm not gonna be doing a three degree approach. I'm gonna slam dunk as fast as I can down to the next allowed point. So once I get past the Castlegar NDB, and my 8,000 foot uh, restriction is lifted, I'm going to slam down to 5,900 as fast as I can, level out, and then the more important one is when I get to 5,900, when I get to the, the brilliant NDB, and I'm passing the NDB, I now can go down to my minimums, which are 5,380. I'm going to slam down to that 5,380 as fast as I can, because it's otherwise, you know, I need to find that airport. It's 4,000 feet below me, Am I going to be able to see that thing at 50, 5380 when it's at 1624? I'm not sure. I want to be down there as fast as possible. So you'll see the, some of the tricks that I do to actually do that. So we are at 9,500. Um, we need to make sure we have the DME set here. So you can see we have 121 point, uh, I'm sorry, 110.1, which if you look up at the DME on the chart is the correct DME. Uh, we have the, and we're starting to get a little bit off our course here, so let's start fixing that. So we need to be at the Castlegar DME at 12.2 DME is where that is, and then 4.5 for the Brilliant DME. Uh, for the D 
uh, the brilliant uh, NDB, pardon me. Now, um, now take note, there's no, nothing saying NDB is required on here. In theory, you could fly this approach without an NDB. Uh, I wouldn't want to do that. You know, maybe if the localizer is down, you'd have to do that. If there's no GPS and no, you don't have GPS in your plane and there's, the localizer is down, you would have to do that. Uh, not my idea of a party, but, uh, but certainly something you could do. But, you know, since we have that, we're going to actually do that. Now, the, the charts are on the web, as I mentioned. Uh, I recommend going and reading them. They're certainly interesting to look at the various uh, NDB approaches. And there's an NDB localizer approach, then there's the RNAV approach. Uh, the, uh, I would probably, if I had the choice, I'd just fly the, the localizer approach if I didn't have the GPS. Obviously the RNAV is the best possible approach, but uh, uh, that's, that's sort of what I would uh, prefer to do um, if I were flying this approach for real. Now, let's see, we are 18.8, we're looking for 12.2, so we have about six nautical miles to go. We have 700 feet to go. Let's go ahead and check our altimeter. We're gonna cheat and do it the, we're gonna do it here instead of listening to the ATIS. Uh, NDB uh, altimeter is 3005. Let's go ahead and fix that up. Uh, 3005, we're already set there correctly. Uh, okay. Starting to creep in on, I'm a little bit right of my course because I want to be hitting this NDB at, at 179. Now, one thing I don't like about this particular airplane, this is the Carinado Bonanza with the rep installed. Uh, it doesn't, you can't actually set the NDB. This, this panel does not work down here. So uh, you actually have to go in and click on the map to actually get that to work, which is uh, a bit annoying. But we'll, we'll do that when we actually get to the, uh, to the NDB. So we are 12.2 as we're, we're slightly over three nautical miles. Getting our course in. Looking good. Now it's funny, I flew this approach earlier in the day and my vacuum pump failed. Uh, <laughs> which is pretty much a bummer. Uh, I'm not going to fly into this airport on an NDB approach on a, uh, with a failed vacuum pump. That would be pretty insane. So, okay, looking good. Almost there, 15.3, 15.2. We're looking for 12.2, three nautical miles. Looking good. I do like this uh, this REP package airplane. Is if you've watched my other videos, you know this is what I'm flying lately. It's uh, it's a nice mix of old and old and new on this airplane. Okay, we're leveling off at 8,000. Let's go ahead and set up for the next. Uh, we're gonna go really, really steeply to the next one. So we're gonna go 1,500 feet per minute, and we are going to uh, set our altitude for 5,900. And you're gonna see the NDB, the, uh, the ADF needle is gonna swing, and once we hit the 90 degrees, we know we're directly over that, uh, over that NDB, and we have the backup here of the uh, DME. So we're exactly one nautical mile away now, and looking good. Speed is down to 120. Uh, as soon as we start slamming down to uh, slamming down to this next uh, point, as soon as we're over the NDB, I'm going to take and drop gear and probably a notch of flaps so we can accelerate our descent. Uh, looking good. Uh, we are 12.2 not point two nautical miles. Here's the needle starting to swing. And as soon as that's the 90 degrees, we know we're over the NDB. There we are, we're over it. Let's go ahead and start our descent. Let's go ahead and drop our gear. Gear coming down, keeping our hand on the handle. Three, four, five, six, seven. Gear is down and locked. Let's go ahead and drop our flaps. And there we go. And the nose is really gonna come down as we do this. So the next point is the next NDB. Let's go ahead and pull that up to make sure we're navigating correctly to it. So we click it there and map, we hit tune ADF1 and the arrow should be pointing directly at it. And there we go, we're a little bit to the right of it. So we'll just go a little bit right. You can see, you know, there's mountains here but we just cannot see that terrain very well. Okay, let's go ahead and increase our rate of descent. 
Okay, 2,000 feet per minute. And we're shooting for 5,900 at 4.5 nautical miles. And we should be able to get there uh, significantly before, and then we can raise our flaps. Now, keeping an eye on our airspeed, our gear extension speed is 143. Our flap one extension speed is 143 as well. So we're pretty good there. There we go. You can see where it looks like we're going to slam into that hill. We're actually leveling out. It's really quite hairy. Uh, you want to make sure you have your altimeter set. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring our gear up. Gear coming up and flaps coming up. There we go. Busting through minimums a little bit, but uh, luckily there's no examiner on board. Let's see, there we go. 5,900 feet, we're 9.2. Our next altitude is going to be 5,380, so we'll go down to 5,400. And I'm going to slam this puppy down. Same exact story, so we can get down and see if we can see that, air, that field. 8.8. .8. Looks like we have a nice wind from the left, so we're going to uh, keep that going. So let's see, 5,400. Let's get down 2,000 feet per minute. Ready to go there. 8.2, we're looking for 4.5. Our gear is up, our flaps are up. Landing lights are on, beacon is on. We're gonna leave the strobe and nav lights off so we don't blind ourselves. We have our gas on the correct tank. So gas is correct, undercarriage is up, mixture is lean, and we're gonna rich in a little bit to keep our, our temperatures up. But we're gonna leave it lean. We're gonna leave our prop at about 2200, and we're gonna leave our throttle down pretty close to 1500. 15 inches. Now if we do need to go, uh, do a, when we do our go around, we're gonna do mixture prop and throttle in that order. 7.2 nautical miles. Uh, we are pretty close to being on course here. We want a 179 degree course. Just another thing to think about when you're, uh, when you're doing these NDB approaches is getting everything uh, steering correctly. Let's, there we go. Oh, it looks like we may have a chance of actually seeing this airport, though it sure doesn't look too promising. The airport's down in this area. So this is, uh, I've flown this a couple times today. I had the vacuum pump failure earlier, and then I flew it before, and both times there's no chance of seeing the airport. It was impossible. So six nautical miles we're getting pretty close now we might actually see this airport on this approach so uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that because we're gonna go missed anyway but that's okay but you can see it's like pretty uh, we're gonna be pretty high when we actually get down there to that uh, to the altitude break and we can actually see the airport so 5380 we're at 5400 that's correct we have our descent down to 2,000 feet per minute uh, 5.1 nautical miles, 0.6 to go. Uh, heading is looking good. 4.9. Should start seeing the needle start to swing in a couple seconds here. 7. There we go. Needle starting to swing. And once we get to 90 degrees, we're going to go ahead and engage. We're going to put our course to 179. And we're going to go ahead and drop our gear. This gear is coming down. One notch of flaps coming down. And it really balloons when we do that. Okay, so we're looking for 5,400. And we're back in the clouds. So the question is, can we actually see the airport here? And it is completely obscured. So let's, let's, I can't see anything here. Keep our nose up. We don't want to bust any minimums here. Yeah, not looking good. We're going to raise our gear and our flaps and give ourselves a little bit more power. And I can't see anything here. 
So we're going to go ahead and go mist. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to climb to 7,000. We're going to go mixture all the way up, power all the way up, our RPMs all the way up for our. Uh, we're going to come to 179. We're going throttle full. And here we go. There's a course of 179. And let's go ahead and set up our 7,000 feet. And, and let's go ahead and go heading here. There we go. And fine tune this a little bit. And here we go. Let's go up at 550 feet per minute. Heading is 179. Gear is up, flaps are up, cowl flaps should come open. And we're doing our mist. Okay, so that is how to do the NDB approach. Uh, pretty challenging. It's uh, the chances of you actually seeing the field are pretty low uh, based on what I've seen, if there's any weather. So I think, uh, I think maybe the next approach is the one to actually do. So let's go ahead and set things up for the RNAV approach. So let's pause it. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the map. And let's go ahead and move the airplane back out. If we can get it to zoom for me. We're going to grab the airplane and we're going to move it to about here. This is where we started. And then we're going to move our altitude up. And pause. And I don't think we need to be at 29,000. Let's go down to... Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit lower. Okay, uh, speed is going to be 120 knots, about. And our heading is going to be about that. So, uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and close that puppy up and unpause and see what's happening here. Woo! Okay, let's go ahead and set our altitude and set our heading so we can do this, set everything up. So, we're at 10,700. Uh, let's see, looking good, yep. 10,800, and this is not working correctly. Let's see, no values here. Headed south, we are. Interesting. That's not quite what we wanted. So let's see, we are 41.4 nautical miles, so we'll just do things the old fashioned way. Let's grab the. Let's grab the CGNDB. So we're going to load that here. We're going to tune ADF1. And hopefully, you guys are learning something about how to. Those of you that aren't experts at explain uh, how to tweak some of these things. So we're 40.6 nautical miles. And okay. So, and let's, are we paused? We are not paused. Now we're paused. Uh, so we're 40 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and set up for our descent to CG. And we're going to come down at 500 feet per minute. So we have we have a little time, uh, 17 minutes. Let's make sure our engine is set up correctly. Our we need to lean out. Let's go ahead and go lean a peak. We're going to bring our RPM down to 2300, and our power is full. Should get us some nice speed, and we can go ahead and cut, close our call flaps because we're at cruise. Turn off our landing lights. We don't need those yet, and. Uh, Let's go ahead and switch over to our left tank. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our nav approach. So we're going direct to Castlegar. So let's go ahead and punch that in. So C Y 
C, G. Okay, activate. And now we are going to load the procedure. So we're going to select the approach and our nav A GPS. And we are going to, let's try the, let's look at the chart. So the chart grade two. So we want to do the EPLIT uh, entry into the uh, entry. So let's try that. So we're going to try EPLIT. Hopefully it's in here. Uh, let's see. And it's not. So let's try a different one. Let's go to, uh, and we're in the wrong chart. Uh, Tai E looks to be a good one. So let's try Tai E. Okay, so let's do that. Tai E, a physical initial approach fix. We're going to hit enter. And let's go ahead and just activate it. And we're going to go nav mode. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to get that done. And there's nav mode. And there we go. So now we are headed for Tai E which is 17.5 .5 nautical miles away. Should be there pretty quickly. And then we need to be at EPLIT. Let's go back to our chart. Uh, we need to be at EPLIT, uh, actually resident at 7200. So we're good uh, until we hit resident. So let's go ahead and set that up. So uh, to do that, we're going to turn off the flight plan. We're going to use the inner knob to go to the right. We're going to go to Resden at 7,200 feet. Zero nautical miles before Resden. Okay, we're actually coming up on that pretty fast, so we need to be on our game here. So let's make the chart small, and we need to keep an eye on that point there. So we need, when we're about 450 knots, we're going to start our descent. So we're going to go Resident at 7200, Sprea at 6500, Ipvov at 5700, and then the essential one is once we hit Ipvov, which is just there to the right of the mountain we just flew over on the uh, on the NDB approach, we need to really start slamming down to our minimums, which are going to be 4,500. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready. So we need to be uh, IPVOV resident at 7,200. So let's get that ready. And 500 feet per minute. And we don't really care that much about this DME at this point because we can just use the DME on the uh, on our uh, on our Garmin, so okay. Uh, now let's see. Uh, missed approach is climbing left to Omvec on track one seven three, and then we continue climb to Ansu on track one forty five. Shuttle to ninety one hundred, max one hundred and seventy five knots. Well, we don't have to worry about that in our climb. Um, okay. I find uh, if I were flying this, uh, I've never flown into this airport. Um, if I were flying this, I would want probably to have a turbocharged airplane. There's some nice, uh, wonderful turbocharged Bonanzas where you can maintain uh, sea level pressure all the way up to uh, all the way up to uh, I think it's 18,000 feet. Maybe it's even higher. So it just gives you much better performance. As you can see, our manifold pressure at full throttle is only 20 inches at this altitude. So, uh, you know, just having that turbocharger would just give you a lot better capability to climb and maintain speeds at this altitude. Okay, here we go. And let's take a look at the map and see what this looks like. Okay, we're going to hit Tai, we're going to turn into Eplit, and then we're going to go down to Resden, and then uh, Resden, we want to be at 7200. Let's make sure we have this set correctly. Yep, looking good. Uh, our speed is coming up. I do not want to let that get up too high. So I'm going to bring it down slightly under 20 inches. 
and keep our speed down. And if we, it looks like our vertical speed required, that 470 number gets up too high, uh, we're gonna take and, and uh, really bring things down quickly. Because we, again, we don't wanna be slamming into this uh, airport at high speeds. So, uh, looking good. Nav is on, let's make sure we're on our, on our looks perfect right there. I'm using the inner knob there to turn that. Uh, it's amazing how GPS has changed aviation. It's like, you know, instead of using the damn NDB approach, you can use uh, this, which is almost like cheating. Uh, okay, we're almost to Taiyi. Minute 20 to Taiyi. We're going to probably start a turn in about uh, 50 seconds. And there we are at 10,000. If you look at the, let's take a little closer look at this map, at this approach chart. Uh, so the, doesn't really tell us. It doesn't look like there's anything above uh, 9,000 in, uh, in this area. So I think we're good to go. Okay, turning into Eplit. Looking for 7,200 at Resden. And the highest point, highest point is 8,200, but we're gonna be, I think, pretty well clear of that. We just need to keep an eye on that. Okay. Okay, let's check our altimeter at the airport. Uh, 3005, and let's make sure we're good there. 3005 is correct. Okay, turning into Eplit. We're still at 9,500 feet. The concern would be 8,200 feet at Resden. Uh, there is not an altitude. I'm really surprised they don't have an altitude marked at Eplit. You would think that that would be uh, something that you would want to do, but that's okay. We actually have some visibility here, which is pretty nice. Let's take a peek. Yeah, we're going to be okay. So coming into Eplit. We're at 9,000 feet. Left turn to Resden. Our goal is 7,200 at Resden. And once we hit 7,200, we're going to jump down to 6,500. I'm going to do the same thing with the autopilot. Typically, I would hand fly this. But uh, for the sake of continuity, let's go ahead and let the machine do the work. Okay, 80, 8,800 feet. I'm gonna bring the rate of descent down a little bit. I'm getting a little nervous about these, uh, these mountains. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine, but better safe than dead. It is pretty nice that we have the Eighty-two hundred feet. They want us eighty-two hundred feet. So I think we're gonna. Okay, we're gonna. We're gonna. I think that's what that map is. What the chart is saying is that maybe we're restricted to eighty-two hundred feet on this leg. So we're gonna stop it at eighty-two hundred feet. A little bit different from what you see on the U.S. approach charts. Uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, but we should be okay here, actually. We don't go between 8,200, we'll just let it keep going. Yeah, they should They should actually, you would think that they would have Eplit marked with 8,200 here, which is strange that they do not. Okay, 8,300, left turn in 12 seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one, we're just barely gonna make it. 
Okay, left turn. Now on the leg to Resden. Let's make sure we are 350 and we are descending at, uh, we're getting pretty close to our 7200. Let's bring our power back a little bit. Really want to be cautious with this airplane, not to let it get too fast. It really builds up, builds up speed fast, and you know, once you get over that gear extension speed, you don't have a lot of options uh, if you want to stay tight on your profiles. Uh, okay, going to Resden. Resden, we want to be at 7,200. We have 900 feet to go. We are two nautical miles out at 350 feet per minute. Let's go ahead and increase the rate of descent. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. We have our altitude engaged, our altitude to hold engaged, so when we hit 7200 we will hold. Okay, sorry it's a little bit of a slow approach here, but uh, you know, slow is, slow is safer. Let's go ahead and get set up for landing. So gas, we are equal on both tanks. Undercarriage is one to go. Mixture is very lean. Let's go ahead and bring it a little warmer. Uh, prop is 2200 now. We'll leave it there. Um, uh, flaps is one to go and switches are good. Uh, go around will require mixture prop and throttle in that order. Okay. Uh, so all we need now is gear and flaps, and we're just going to leave them where they are for the second. Notice we have LNAV plus V popping up on our, uh, popping up on the Garmin. Okay. Uh, approaching 7,200 feet, and as soon as we level out, let's make sure this is armed. There we are. And let's go ahead and go down to our next point, which is Ipvav, I'm sorry, Sprea at 6,500. I don't think I'm gonna need to slam dunk too hard for this one. Uh, okay. And we have 26 seconds to go for that. Okay, no POC. So it looks like they've changed their charts on us. Uh, okay, this is why you don't use these for real world navigation. Uh, IPVOV is gonna be, let's just, let's just go ahead and start a descent. We're gonna set IPVOV's altitude. So IPVOV is gonna be 5,700. And altitude is engaged. And 5,700, and let's see how far we are from IFOB. We're two nautical miles, and we're going to be there before we know it. So let's go ahead and start bringing our gear down. Gear is coming down, speed checks. Gear is down and locked. Let's go ahead and give us a notch of flaps. Okay, let's check to make sure our flaps are down. They are down. Okay. Uh, speed is coming down. Uh, let's go ahead and okay, above and above. We need to be there at. Uh, we should be good to go. So it's a little bit of. Let's go ahead and slam this puppy down. We're down a thousand feet per minute. We have a minute and a half to get down to 5,700. So we're gonna need even faster than that. So let's go ahead and go down fast. Okay, there we go. Speed is okay. And then our minimums are gonna be 4,500 once we get to 5,700. Okay, 
let's get this down to 4,500 and we are gonna go down fast. Okay, at five, 28 seconds. Our speed is coming down a little much, so let's go ahead and bring that up. So 4,500 is our next goal. We're gonna bring this down to 2,000. Okay, if five to runaway 15, let's go ahead and start this puppy down. And we're gonna bring our gear down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gear is down, flaps are down. Okay. We can go ahead and close this puppy up so we can see. And we're gonna get rid of the chart so we've got full vision. And here we go. Power's coming down. Five point five five nautical miles. Two point two on there. So we are we should be right on top of uh, the airport here, and it is completely socked over. So. That kind of takes a lot of the, a lot of the fun out of the party. So we have, you know, another, another mile to see that airport. But you know, let's take a look down there. There's nothing to see down there. Oh, uh, maybe we have a chance. Let's see. Ah, it's uh. Uh, let's just so oh, there we are there's the runway haha -ha. so basically just absolutely on the fringe of, of, of being able to uh, to see this airport so pretty fun I mean as you can see how incredibly difficult it is to make this approach and land in this weather so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a uh, an upwind here and I've got my gear down and my flaps down just to enable my approach we know at 1,600 feet is the airport altitude, so we're going to 2,600 to try to be in the uh, to be in the pattern. And you can look over there. You know, you don't want to circle to the left. Uh, circling to the right is acceptable. Going for 2,600. really came down starkly. You can see how nearly impossible it is to make this approach and uh, uh, okay so our runway is going to be to the right. Let's go ahead and that's pretty close to pattern altitude. Let's go ahead and bring our gear and flaps up. Got a little mass and balance uh, icon coming up there, but we're pretty good here. Let's see. Nice rate one turn. Plane's chugging a little bit on the uh, all the clouds and everything else. Okay. Okay. So gas is good. Undercarriage is one to go. Mixture is lean. Prop is 2200. Flaps are. Uh, let's go ahead and drop our gear. We'll start our descent. Flaps are one to go, switches are, landing lights are on, our yaw damper is off, and other than that, we're looking pretty good. Okay. Start our right base.
Okay. Let's go ahead and bring the flaps down. It's a lot harder in uh, X plane to actually, or at least in this particular airplane, to fly uh, fly the right traffic patterns because the uh, everything gets blocked by that uh, thing, and you can't exactly lean forward in an easy way. Okay, gear, gas, gear. Uh, mixture is good, props are good. Okay. Need a little bit more power. It's funny, they got a lot of trees right at the end of this field, which I would hope that, you know, that's, don't make it too freaking hard to land here. Okay. Okay. Gears down. made it safely. It's a pretty touch and go approach there for a while. Uh, it's amazingly difficult to uh, when there's weather to actually get down underneath the clouds and uh, it's you know every time I've flown it in in the fall this year it's been uh, and it's what is it it's October right now it's uh, quite challenging to get down there's just so much overcast when you use the real world weather. Okay And let's go ahead and clean everything up. Uh, looks like it's, I just lost the screen. Okay. Uh, jump back to the screen. Let's go flaps up, F-L-A-P-S. And let's see if we can get those to go up. They're up. Cal flaps we are going to open. Pull off the engine a bit. Uh, we're gonna set our. I have trouble reading that. That's just about where I want that. I want my landing lights off, taxi lights on, turn off my pedo and de icing, and I think we're good. Thank you very much for flying with me. If you have any questions, comments, you think I screwed some things up royally, I'd be interested to hear it. Uh, please be nice though, and let me know what other approaches you want me to fly. I've got a couple things in my uh, in my pocket for the moment for when I have some, some time to do it. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.